there are some people who argue that the problem is that we didn't have the right counterinsurgency doctrine, and once we got the right counterinsurgency doctrine in December of 2006 with the new field manual 3-24, and then we had the surge a month later in January 2007, we had finally figured out what to do, and now we're in really good shape in Iraq. Let's assume that that's true, and that John's story that we're in trouble in Iraq is wrong. Okay, let's just assume that. The problem, nevertheless, is that to win a counterinsurgency, whether you're the British in Malaysia, the Americans in Vietnam, or the Americans in Afghanistan and Iraq, the problem is that it takes well over 10 years to win a counterinsurgency, assuming you can do it. But if it takes you 10 years, you cannot float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. And floating like a butterfly and stinging like a bee was the key to the Bush doctrine. Because we were going to do Afghanistan, then we were going to do Iraq. Pull back out, reload the shotgun, do Iran, do Syria. Pretty soon everybody would be so scared they'd just throw their hands up and jump on the American bandwagon. You know, the Israelis, when they heard in early 2002, remember Afghanistan, we're talking December 2001. Early 2002, the Israelis uh, catch, get wind that we're thinking of doing Iraq. And they send a team over here to say, are you guys crazy? Iran is the real threat, not Iraq. Why aren't you doing Iran? What we convinced the Israelis is that we're going to do Iraq first, because it's the low-hanging fruit. And then we're going to do Iran. And then we're going to do Syria. right? So the Israelis actually get on board for doing Iraq, but they keep reminding us, don't forget, when you're done with Iraq, you've got to do Iran, right? And see, we say, don't worry, not only are we going to do Iran, we're going to do Syria. Because again, the name of the game here is to transform the entire region. It gets back to that question, why do they hate us? If you think about it, they hate us because of who we are, therefore we have to transform, who, transform them and change who they are. And we think we can do it with military force. But again, what happened in Afghanistan was a barrage. And that's why all these Democrats were fools to abandon their skepticism about military force. My final point, uh, spreading democracy. This is quite amazing. There is a huge literature in the social sciences that comes to one clear conclusion. That, that doesn't often happen in the social sciences, right? I can tell you. It's very easy whenever you teach on any subject to put out pieces by people on one side and people on the other side, right? But with regard to the question of how easy it is to spread democracy, the literature is clear. It is remarkably difficult to do. People will say, well, what about Germany and Japan? Well, Germany and Japan are exceptions. They're modern, industrialized countries. And in the case of Germany, they had a lot of history with democracy. Remember Weimar Germany? So once we went in there and destroyed the place, and we literally destroyed both of those countries in World War II, Japan and Germany, given the infrastructure they had, given their histories, it was rather easy to create a democracy. It was actually rather easy. But if you're talking about creating democracy in Afghanistan, creating democracy in Iraq, right? And you look at the centrifugal forces that are at play in countries like Iraq, this is going to be a very tricky situation. I mean, what's amazing about the Bush administration is they thought that this would happen lickety split. This is why they thought they could float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Their basic view was that we were going to do in the Middle East what happened in Eastern Europe in 1989. You all remember when the Soviet Union pulls out of East, or they don't actually pull out at the moment, but when the Cold War ends and the Soviets start pulling out of Eastern Europe, most of the Eastern European countries emerge as democracies, imperfect democracies, but nevertheless democracies. So the basic Bush slash neoconservative worldview is that if you topple tyrants like Saddam Hussein, that democracy will just break out. This sort of gets to the Frank Fukuyama line of thesis. 
But Frank Fukuyama, much to his credit, opposed the Iraq War. He thought the Iraq War was a bad idea. He thought that democracy would eventually spread across the globe, but it would take time. And in places like in Iraq and Afghanistan and the Middle East more generally, right, it would be a function of what was happening inside those countries, not American military force. But anyway, because we misread the terrorist threat, number one, Number two, because we misread what happened in Afghanistan and we did not have a healthy appreciation of the limits of military force, we got ourselves into trouble in both Afghanistan and in Iraq. And then finally, because we did not appreciate how difficult it is to spread democracy, we found out that it was impossible to create democracy in Iraq and Afghanistan quickly so that we again could get out and move on to the next target. So I think those are the factors that explain why we are in so much trouble today. And the more general point that I tried to make was that the reason we are in trouble is because we adopted this grand strategy of global dominance after 1989. And global dominance is, in my opinion, a remarkably foolish strategy because it's impossible for any country, the United States included, to run the entire globe. And it's especially difficult, if not impossible, to do that if you try and do it at the end of a rifle barrel.